how can you make a strong case for your research? Um, there are four different cases. One is when, if you find a new problem and you come up with a new solution, okay? Um, there's something happening in the world, nobody has, the, no, no one has seen it before, it's a completely new thing, and now all of a sudden you come up with a new solution for it. This is called breakthrough research. Um, it's very uncommon. Most of the research that we see these days is, does not fall in this category. In fact, um, uh, think about people who get Nobel Prize for physics or chemistry or mathematics or, or some disciplines like this. They get it based on breakthrough research. So very few people, I mean, imagine for the first time somebody coming up with uh, a treatment for, um, uh, let's say, HIV or you know some major things. That is breakthrough research. It's one once in a lifetime experience, and not many people um, ca can do this. I mean, you can certainly do it, but it requires a lot of a um, lot of practice and a lot of going through things. So that's case number one. Case number two is new problem, old solution. So you see, there's a new problem in the world, and you bring old solution for it. Uh, for instance, COVID-19. Right now, we have this issue. Um, uh, it has already claimed a lot of lives around the world. It's a new problem. It's a new type of virus. Nobody has seen it before. But because there's no vaccine for it, people are trying to uh, look into old solutions. So the current medicines that people are trying are medicines for malaria or uh, cold or flu, things like this. So new problems, old solutions, you can come with that. And this one is fine to do. The third one is old problem, new solution. You have an old problem you come up with a new solution. For instance, uh, old problem is connecting people, how to make sure that people are connected with each other, right? So 5,000 years ago, people were connected by drawing different type of pictures on the walls, like pyramids of Egypt or some other places, you see there are things drawn on the wall. That was a medium of communication or connection. Uh, then going further, people had animals to travel on them, horses, this and that. So the problem is old, how to communicate with each other, how to connect with each other, but every era comes with a new solution. Um, then we had fax, we had telegrams, we have post, and then we have fax and telephone and mobile phone and internet. So these are all new solutions coming for the same old problem, and the problem was how to connect, how to network with each other. Now with this coronavirus, the universities are closed, so we have newer solutions. We are working on Google Meet, we are working on Zoom. These are new solutions for the same old problem. Most of the time, uh, the recommendation is to focus on case two or three. If you are focusing on that, you are doing, you are still doing a contribution, but it's not breakthrough, but it's a good contribution to target for. Uh, case number four is old problem, old solution. Unfortunately, this is where most of the research lies. Uh, and that's why we have a lot of rejections because we always ask people, so what? Because we already know it. It's an old problem. And what you are telling me is old solution. If you remember, I just showed you one of the reviews that I made and the review, the review was whatever the author is saying, obviously there's no theoretical contribution, but whatever the author is saying is already being implemented in the industry. So what's the point of this paper actually? So. Um, you can certainly start with this case, case four. Those of you who have never published, you can start with it, just get the feel of it. But ultimately, my suggestion is to target two and three if you want to go for one. Um, so that's uh, how you can develop cases for research. Um, after cases, there are seven strategies that I'm going to tell you on how you can make uh, the, the perfect pitch. Why do we need perfect pitch? Because Remember, nobody has a lot of time. When the, when the editor looks at the title of your paper or the abstract of your paper, they already make their mind. Same is the case with reviewers. So remember that this perfect pitch is extremely, extremely important. Um, so let's see. Uh, point, okay. So um, let's go. Uh, let me ask you all this one. Uh, let's assume you have collected data on customer satisfaction and customer loyalty with the sample of hotel guests in Sudan, and this is the justification that you have provided. Uh, do you think this would be acceptable to reviewers? The thing is this, when we look at satisfaction and loyalty, right, 
it has been examined, I don't know, not even hundreds, I guess, hundreds and thousands of times. So, I mean, even if the context is different, how different can the context be to change that relation that we have been seeing for the last, I don't know, 200, 300 years in the literature and thousands of years in human history? Satisfaction leads to loyalty. So it doesn't matter what, wherever you're doing it, it's pretty much the same everywhere. So you can still do this study, but you can give it a good spin, change it a little bit, and that would make uh, chances of this study being published much better. So let me give you a few strategies, okay? One is uh, the strategy is where um, it's already been done before, but research is still needed. What do we mean by this? For instance, the relationship between perceptions and share of wallet among millennials in Sudan. Now, this is pretty much the same thing what we did earlier in the previous slide. But what I did was I changed satisfaction with perceptions of something because satisfaction is normally your perception towards something, right? Your perception toward service quality or value or whatever, but perceptions. And then loyalty has a lot of different things. So it's not important or not necessary to call it loyalty. You can go within loyalty and see what are some of the variables in loyalty that are not studied well before. A share of wallet is one of them. So converting the relationship between satisfaction and loyalty in Sudan uh, to something like relationship between perceptions and share of wallet among millennials in Sudan would have a much more chance of getting accepted compared to the previous one. Here also, Sudan as a whole country may be important for many people, but if you are focusing on one group in Sudan, which is millennials, with which there's a lot of research coming on there, uh, many people are interested on millennials. Many people are interested in what millennials are doing, what are their perceptions, what is their spending patterns, because all over the world, millennials are the next generation that have the money and who are going to spend that money. So this would be much more uh, interesting compared to the previous slide. However, here, your argument again should be very persuasive about the choice of the variables and the choice of the group. Here, your group is millennials in Sudan, so you have to provide justification or some context about millennials in Sudan, as well as why you are looking at perceptions and why share of wallet versus any other variable in loyalty. Strategy number two is you combine variables or ideas from different studies that have not been examined simultaneously before. This is what most of the people do. So if you are, let's say, studying organizational commitment, you pick up five different papers and then you merge all the models into one big model and then you say this has not been done before. Again, it's a good strategy. You can certainly work on it. For instance, um, there's a study saying examining the impact of fun, thrill, and engagement on customer satisfaction and loyalty in adventure tourism. You can do this, it's a good strategy, but again, um, it can be a hard sell because sometimes when you put things together, you, you need to justify the linkages between those different models and how they are linked and why is it important to link those models. Strategy number three is, although it has been done before, do it bigger and better. Uh, so here is where replication is important. So if you are doing a replication study, do it bigger and better, do it better than what has been done before. So for instance, I have a study, maybe some of you already have seen it. This was my first ever paper that I did, effects of physical environment uh, and social environment on emotions and behavior in hotels. Obviously I looked into um, con consumer behavior on how it impacts consumers. But if you want to do this, you can do it based on employees because employees also work in the hotels physical environment and social environment also impacts employees emotions and behaviors i collected data from 400 consumers you can collect data from 3000 employees you can collect data from three different countries or three different types of hotels or three different groups of hotels um, and you can go ahead and then uh, has anybody heard of this before mediated binary logistic regression yeah, uh, this doesn't exist. This one I just put together some complicated names together. So I just put them together because many people just get very um, impressed with statistics. So when you are doing bigger, better, do some uh, complicated statistics, bring more data sets, more sample sizes, and this. but make sure that you are saying this, that I'm doing this. It has more generalizability. It has more viewpoint, more implications. 
So that can be your uh, strategy number three. Um, in this one, again, people can question the value as far as your logic of doing that bigger and better is sound, you should be okay. Strategy number four, do something controversial or irresistible. This is very important. Um, let's say if you are doing uh, a topic that is very controversial. Um, for instance, in uh, okay, let me uh, say this. If, um, if you are doing a research that involves different sects of religion in Pakistan, that can be a controversial research because you know people are very polarizing about it. Or um, let's, let's say if you are doing a research that has to do with um, uh, uh, political um, ideology in America, people don't want to talk about it. Like, you know, let's say now President Trump, there is very interesting dichotomy. Some people love him, some people don't. So if you do some research involving something like this, it can be controversial. Um, you can obviously do uh, research on um, sexual orientation or some other things that are controversial in society that are tabooed. Uh, people don't like to talk about them. That can be an interesting strategy because remember, this is business. Impact factor is based on citations. Citations can come from positive or negative things. Sometimes if you are doing controversial, you are actually getting more citations because people who love that topic are gonna cite you. People who hate it are gonna cite you saying that this person has done rubbish. So you still get citations for it. People still talk about you, it's marketing, it's more about discussion. So for instance, uh, there, there was a study on the impact of server attractiveness, ability and personality on test intention to tip. Uh, many people might think what is controversial in this? You know that in many developed countries you don't talk about attractiveness of people. Uh, how do they look? Are they attractive? Are they not attractive? Things like this. So it's a controversial topic. Or maybe you can uh, work on uh, tattoos. Uh, tattoos is a very controversial topic. So things like this are interesting. Uh, they have inclination more towards getting acceptance. However, remember that some stuff that is um, controversial today is not controversial after some time. Oh, yes, I, I just remember a good example. Um, right before this coronavirus, I was looking into Pakistani media and uh, for the, for uh, I guess two weeks before this coronavirus thing, the entire media was talking about Aurat March and Mera Jisam Meri Marji type of things, uh, which is a very controversial thing. Um, again, I, it doesn't matter what I think about it um, and I would prefer not to say it, but um, if you are doing research on this, obviously there's a group of people who are against it they are obviously going to criticize you. There's a group of people who are pro or at March and that, and those people are gonna love you for writing that research piece. So those are controversial things. However, remember that maybe this Aurat March and these things are controversial today, but five years, 10 years down the road, they may not be controversial. So you may get acceptance for your paper today, you may even get citations for it today, but five years, 10 years down the road, uh, your citation count may drop, but it's okay. I mean, your paper would be accepted by then. So that's another strategy. Um, these are some strategies uh, that you can apply in order to increase the chances of um, going through the first round. Now, obviously, after this, if you're making those major mistakes, then you cannot come to me and say, well, you told me the strategy and I, my paper then get accepted. It's just because we um, made some major mistakes after that. I think that what you need to do is understand that your contribution can go on multiple levels. Uh, it can be theoretical or conceptual. If you're bringing a new concept, you're proposing a theory, extending a theory, um, uh, you know, if you are criticizing a theory, that's your theoretical contribution. You can also do a methodological contribution which involves scale development, new methods, new methods of sampling, new methods of data collection, uh, new methods of analysis. Um, that can be your methodological contribution or you can do a contextual contribution, which means you conduct a study in a new context, you replicate a study. Again, remember that the focus should be on why is that context important. Um, however, having said that, remember that when you are uh, working on your paper, it's highly possible that somebody else is also working on that topic. So if you spend too much time on your work, it's possible that some other people have published their work on similar topic. So, 
remember to craft and recraft your intro introduction a few times. The first time you write your introduction, it's possible that by the time you finish your paper, your introduction may need a revamp because you didn't know your findings uh, at that time. You didn't know how your conclusions would be. So make sure that you recraft your introduction in the end. Um, remember, if you are playing safe, uh, like if you have reference for everything, if you want to justify everything, people are going to question the novelty of your study. Like what is new in this study? If you go novel, which means if you go completely new, people will question everything. And this happens with a lot of us. So remember that you should strive for multiple unique elements. Maybe you should make a conceptual or theoretical contribution in a new context. Uh, then you have a much bigger chance of getting accepted. Maybe you are making a, a methodological contribution by uh, replicating a study in a new context. So make sure that you are bringing multiple unique elements in your study so that the appeal for that study increases. 